So here I am, I'm Anne-Marie Jacquard, back with more Bonnaroo of 2002, and I have the very distinct pleasure of sitting here with Bob Weir and Phil Lesh. Hi, guys. Hiya. 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 <laughs> you don't have to worry about him. Oh, yeah. There you go. Uh -huh. um, it was really great to see you guys on that stage today, together, oh, okay. performing. It was good, clean fun. It was good, clean fun. And you know, I saw the uh, New Year's show, which oh, absolutely was incredible and I heard that before that gig there was not a lot of rehearsing that was going on beforehand was it really impromptu not a lot well <laughs> Bobby, well, yeah, I, the Bobby and I we it. sort of we, we stumbled at the choreography I mean we didn't have time to put into the choreography so our steps weren't just exactly perfect but uh, I think on the got, float or stepping on the stage or yeah. no, that was a problem too at one point but the uh, thing is uh, Bobby and I had played some gigs together before that. Yeah. So we sort of did a little work together. Yeah. Yeah. At the uh, at the Sweetwater, right? Yeah, yeah. Was that? Yeah. yeah. And also on the on the road during that last yeah. summer. Okay, right. Well, and I actually interviewed Kim Ock and I asked him about what it was like to play at the Sweetwater, and he his wife started screaming at me on the set. <laughs> so. Don't say Sweetwater. So. Let's talk about the future and what you guys have been doing. Um, and I heard that you guys have been in the studio for the last month working on some new material. Most of the last month, not working on yeah. new material, trying to remember what it is that we do. Trying to remember all the songs we used to play together. Having, them, bringing them back. Having our share of senior moments. <laughs> I just heard that for the first time the other day. I have moments too. Um, I also want to tell you guys that obviously you are, you laid the groundwork for everything that has happened for Bonnaroo. You were out there, you were the live touring. I know that you're humble about it, but it is the truth. And Bill Graham brought, brought the whole scene on and you made it happen and you made it work with the fans. And now it's turned into this insane cross section of all these different styles of music that have been brought back. Of course it was like that years ago, right? But you guys had the biggest touring base. When you stopped, your touring base went to different jam bands, a lot of them. Some of them relaxed. Others went to Fish or went to Panic or went wherever. And it seems like there's a big, big representation of what you, what you laid out in the quilts of music. What do you think about that when you're standing on stage looking out at it? I think to be remembered is that this is our American musical heritage. This is improvisational music with its roots. Jazz musicians have been doing it for 100 years. Yeah, with his roots coming from different continents and stuff like that that came together in a, in a fusion in America, you know, 100 and some years ago and started to emerge as the jazz tradition, the blues tradition, and all that kind of stuff. We didn't do dick. We just played and, <laughs> and, and just stayed true to that tradition. And, and people found it, you know, yeah. found it worthy of, uh, of their attention. But really, we were just carrying on a tradition that's, you know, old by American standards. Right. Well, and it's great that everything is mixing, too. I was talking to Robert Randolph, who, in a short year of his career, went from playing in the church to opening at Madison Square Garden. He told me a story about actually flying on a plane with you, Phil. Yeah. And, you know, the sacred steel, Robert's rise into this whole scene has been really incredible, and it shows how accepting everyone is of all the different styles, but I want to know what you think about Robert Randolph's music. Oh, I think it's amazing, and it's, I mean, coming out of the church like it does, it's, it's, a, it's a whole, it's a kind of a whole new approach to, uh, because it, Robert doesn't really know a lot about the music that's been going on outside the church. For the, you know, he grew up in the church and he learned to play in the church, and uh, right now he's just, he's just, he's a, he's a sponge. He's like sucking up all this, all this incredible music that's out there, and he's going, "Wow, yes, oh man, yeah." yeah. And he's just, he's just, pour, you know, transmuting it inside himself and pouring it back out. It's a beautiful thing. It's a it really beautiful is. Thing. I talked to him before he went on stage in New Orleans with you, and he was just like, you know, he had never really knew about your music, but you, you guys flew on a plane together. So he got yeah. to talk to you. Yeah. You guys randomly ended we up on the airport for hours and hours. Random moments, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's really incredible, and it and it's nice how diversified everything has become. And actually, Bobby, I wanted to ask you about the experience of playing with DJ Logic. 
Uh, we got some work to do. I mean, there are some places to go. He's a, you know, he's a hip hop guy, but he's got jazz sensibilities. Right, exactly. And really, we work, we work within the jazz continuum with, you know, the jazz modus operandi. And uh, and we're working together. We're we're finding we're finding where we where we can talk to each other, and it's a lot of fun. Um, and it's kind of fulfilling for me because there's a whole side of American popular music that I, you know, I just I never got up to speed with, and he's bringing me slowly into that. Totally. And. I find that really, really rewarding to uh, to to get to relate to and and on a Bobby Logic. I was calling it Bobby Logic. <laughs> on a given night, you know, we can make some some real some fun stuff happen. So, what are you guys looking to in the future? What's what's just beyond the horizon? Well, we not doing. We both have bands that we that we tour with and and record with, and uh, we're going to do. We're go, we're go, all the members of the Grateful Dead, the surviving members of the original band, are going to get together in, on August 3rd and 4th somewhere in this country and uh, do, a, do a little festival together. And uh, together Sometime with all our other year, bands. this year, maybe? Or in, I'm the, sorry? in the near future? or August, August 3rd and 4th, yeah. August, mm -hmm. August 3rd. Are you and, sure and, that's 3rd and 4th and not 2nd and 3rd? Yes, I'm positive. I thought you said yeah, August 34th. We're, we're going we're gonna, to you know, call it, not, surprising, not, a, not surprisingly, Terrapin Station. And... Uh, uh, all of our individual bands will play. Uh, there'll be a second stage with uh, other bands, and then uh, for at the close each night, we'll all get together and play, and uh, for a couple hours. And you know. but beyond that, I'm just trying. Okay. okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, Phil. But be but beyond that, you know, I don't think we've really thought much about what's going to happen beyond that. We're on the uh, on the two-step program: left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. We're gonna we're gonna see where all this leads us to. Yeah. There'll be plenty of stuff, I think. You know, I've done a lot of work, as I told you, over the years with different styles of jams, and there's all these French friends projects now, where everyone's coming together. I really, really have enjoyed all the different projects. I've also really become um, close to Warren Haynes, and I saw him years ago in New Orleans, and was thinking about how Warren. Warren is sort of a vortex. He's a conductor of many different styles too, because he played with Logic. He plays with you. He plays with different people, and he's hardworking, and he can just sit in everywhere and fit in. And I'm, I'm really, really also very impressed by his latest project, The Deep End. And I was curious to know what you think about that, Phil. And I think, I think it's, it was, certainly it was an honor to to be invited to play on that with uh, with all those great bass players. It was really amazing. Uh, the, the variety of, of songs that Warren, Warren is a real poet and a, and a keen observer of human nature, aside from being a killer guitar player and singer. But he, um, he the, the material that he put all together, on, I mean, the variety of material he put together on those two albums is really astonishing. And the playing that he pulled out of, of some of these players, you know, it's really, really, uh, he's made them play outside themselves. And I think that's a great thing. It really is. Have you seen the movie? Rising Low. Mike Mike Gordon directed the movie Rising Low, which oh, is yeah, the making of. Oh yeah, is that the name of it? I hadn't, I hadn't yeah. seen it, the whole thing. Um, it's really interesting and, and it's very descriptive and goes into detail about each personality and each sound and tone of the bass and. Yeah, he actually he filmed my aura. Yeah, right. He filmed everybody's aura. They did aura. I didn't know you could do that until we started we started working on that. That's right. Normally you could just see him from the stage. <laughs> so. At Terrapin Station, are you going to invite a bunch of other bands to open for you? To uh, invite a bunch of You're going to have a bunch of opening bands? Well, uh, it's a two-day festival, okay. and, and, and we're, and we're going we're gonna to have a second stage, as I said earlier, with, um, with some, 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 I guess, what you could call opening bands, and I don't remember who they are right now. Uh, there's a lot of details that are escaping me uh, in this little senior you know, moment I'm having right now. Like, Look, look forward to in the future. Rat Dog is going to be there. Yeah. My band is going to be there. Uh, Trichromes, Billy Kreutzmann's band is going to be there. Bemba Orisha, Mickey Hart's band is going to be there. So they, th those four bands will open up, two of them each of the days. And, be, and, the, and then the second stage will have. And also, Robert Hunter is going to be there doing a rare live performance. Very nice. And he just worked on a project, too, with Jim Lauderdale. I was sort of surprised about that. Do you know who Jim Lauderdale is? Jim Lauderdale is? Country, yeah. 
Western guy. He just did a big project with Robert. That's pretty incredible. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> it's all right. You know, I also am curious to know what exactly is the scenario at Al Alpine Vi I'm sorry, I can't Nobody knows what that scenario that. is. What's going on? Nobody knows. Really? Uh, at, least, at least of all me. I can tell you that we have a crack team of management personnel that are working their butts off to make something happen. We don't know whether it's going to be at Alpine Valley or whether it's going to be at some other location in the Midwest. But we it'll, are going to play together. It'll be near there because um, we sold a bunch of tickets in that area. And we're, we're going to put something on somewhere. I have a sneaking hunch that we'll be able to sneak back into uh, Alpine Valley. I would imagine that you will work it out really quickly. So. Do you want to talk about, since this is also for mainstream media, a lot of people don't really understand the music and the fan base. And this, this all was internet driven and fan base driven, which you also started the beginning of letting people come and tape for the most part and, and have freedom within the scene to do different things that most artists don't. At the Grammys, they were talking about the tragedy of downloading music and, and, and free taping and things like that. What do you think about um, the direction of the whole scene in terms of selling 70,000 tickets via internet and how quickly that happened and, and where the scene is going from Bonnaroo into the future. Anything we could possibly say would be conjecture. Nobody knows, nobody has any idea where, what the internet is going to do uh, to the music right. business. Right. Um, we've always been sort of outsiders in the music business, so we're just kind of standing around and and uh, and watching kind of amusedly because yeah. uh trying to trying to uh, sort of feeling like come on get it together you know let's find out let's find a plan you know to, to make this work because people want music on the internet they want music and video and all that stuff on demand yeah and we're going to we're going to be playing regardless and we're going to be selling concert tickets and Selling or down, and doing all those things. downloading music, we don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody has really the, the first clue. We're just going to see where it bounces to. Well, and you played many, many, many shows where there weren't cell phones and all the technology that's happening, and people just came and saw the music and found each other anyway. You know, sometimes I look around, I'm like, this, the total telecommunications breakdown here amazed me. You know, I love it. Well, I appreciate you guys talking to me. Um, and, and through you to the millions of MTV Through me viewers. to the millions. I also want to know just one more thing: is what's going on with the guitars? Is that been re resolved? Yeah, there. Uh, the the uh, you, t you, you were closer to that than I was. Like. It's more or less resolved. Uh, uh, Doug Irwin got two of the guitars. Uh, the Grateful Dead retained a couple of them. It's a long story. I think yeah, sure. probably the wrong thing happened there, but we've survived innumerable wrong things in the past so you know it's just more water under the bridge and actually i believe the the two that doug Irwin got were auctioned off is that yeah right? yeah they were auctioned off recently they were auctioned off and if we ever do put together this uh this terrapin station that we used to talk about in uh you know on the road and stuff like that this uh this place for for performance music and in, in any of a number of amazing uh, possible ways of putting it putting it across. Uh, whoever has those guitars will perhaps step up and uh, and let us put them on display there. Because you know it'd be nice to for for some people to to be able to share them with the there's a big old centipede over there. There is. It's a free range centipede. My company is actually called Free Range. So we have all different kinds of free-range animals around us all the time. You guys, I really appreciate this. Um, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. And I, I just want to know if there's anything else that you want to vocalize about anything to this large of an audience that hasn't even been hip enough to get into. Well, hey, we both have records out. <laughs> get out and, there and enjoy your music. Yeah. Do you want to talk about organ donation or anything, and how important that is? I think that I think that the music scene also has pretty has cleaned up a lot. Like I think people are using more responsibly, or it doesn't seem as 
you know, maybe as chaotic as it has been in the past. I don't know exactly what I'm saying, but but I think that um, I think that it's interesting that you can't you can't choose that either. You know, we have a friend who's in a band here who's very sick right now, and he can't even choose that option. So I think it's he can't have an an organ transplant because he's beyond that point, from what I understand. However. I don't believe that. You don't true. believe that? Uh, you know, I, I think maybe that, this, maybe that your friend needs to uh, check out some some different uh, opinions. Well, he has a pan it's a pancreas. Though. Oh, pancreatic cancer. Yeah. Is, it, is that what that is? Yes. Yeah, well, that's, so, a, that's a very is that that's not that's not Mike from. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, yeah, I heard about that. So part of what I part of what I'm asking you, I guess, is that we all make choices in our life, and there's a flow, and there's things that happen that we can't control, and we can. So. I guess I want you to just say something else about what you say from stage because oh. sometimes people can't hear it and they can't really hear necessarily what you're saying. What I always say at my shows is uh, I want to urge everybody that's looking at me now or within the sound of my voice to become an organ donor. You might help to save the life of somebody that's weirder than me. Uh, I ask everybody to think about if they needed an organ or if somebody you love really a lot needed an organ would you accept it if it was available and if you would then fair is fair you got to be a donor too so go on, go on get on out there and sign up those donor cards and help and uh, help save the life of somebody you'll never meet Bobby is there anything else that you want to talk about before we before we break not really okay I was gonna ask you about your sister's book and all that. No, 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 no. no, uh, uh, uh. Okay, and that one is under the radar. Thank you so much for talking to me. And if, if you don't mind, I would love to have an ID. Anne sure. Marie. Anne Marie? Yeah. What are we doing? An ID. Okay. Hi, I'm Bobby Weir, formerly with uh, The Grateful Dead, now with Rat Dog, and sometimes with Phil and Friends, or the other ones. And we're here at Bonnaroo, and, and uh, I want you all to check out Anne Marie on MTV. Hey, I'm Phil Lesh, formerly of The Grateful Dead, and Phil Lesh and Friends. You are watching Anne Marie on MTV from the Bonnaroo Festival. Hi, I'm Bobby Weir, formerly of the Grateful Dead, now with Rat Dog, sometimes Phil and Friends, sometimes the other ones, and you're watching Free Range with Anne Marie on MTV. Hey, I'm Phil Lesh, formerly of the Grateful Dead, and also of Phil Lesh and Friends, and you are watching Free Range, and Anne Marie is lurking around here somewhere. Mm -hmm. 